Today we're making an advent tag using Day 9 from Tracy Fox's December Daily Kit. I have five variations of tag to share that are all from just one simple approach. So lots of ideas for using your own stash and for just getting really creative. The kit looks like this. So we have three large tag backgrounds and also three lovely icons here, two sentiments and the number of the day. And I've integrated these in lots of different ways into these five common approach but different designs. I also have process steps for you so you can find these in Pinterest along with about 40 others. So don't forget to subscribe. Let's make our day nine tag. So I'm going to begin by making a front focal point for the tag and by that I mean this piece here. So this front tag is slightly raised, it's 3D. So we have a large tag behind and one at the front. And all I've done is take the large base and just print a couple on a page, which means it naturally shrinks it. I've backed it onto some dark paper. I've used black paper. And the paper that I've used is from Hobbycraft, it's this pack. It is 160 GSM, not particularly thick cardstock, but it's just what I had available. You could equally use a dark brown or maybe a dark green would look beautiful too. And the mat has a little border of about two or three millimetres. And I'm just going to trim off at the top here. So I've gone all the way around it which leaves me enough space to add a very pretty faux stitching border. Just tidy that up. In fact, take a bit off there to even it up. So I'm going to take a white gel pen. This is a Jelly Roll Secura pen. I think I got this from Stationery Pal. And if you don't want to do sewing, and sometimes life is a bit too short to get your sewing machine out for a little tag, this is a wonderful way of adding faux stitches because they show up incredibly well on that black mat behind. So this is step one of the common approach that I've used for all five of these tags. And what I'll do is I'll make a tag and it is very easy. And then I'll just very quickly show you the five other variations because they've got different techniques used in putting them together which I hope gives you some inspiration for digging into your own stash and using your own supplies to make these as well. Now, having got our little focal point ready, what I want to do is give it a skirt. And you can see on each of these, I've got a skirt at the bottom and I've used my punches to just make a decorative element, to just add a little bit of something extra. So the punches that I've been using, I just dug out what was in my drawers I think that's a Martha Stewart and it happens to have some Christmas holly. I really like this one. I think I've got most of these secondhand on eBay. This is a stamping up punch and I really like the fluty edge. I also have an orange one. I don't know who this is, which the manufacturer is, but that's really pretty and it's also Christmassy. But I also wanted to point out that if you don't have any of these punches, with this method, you could just take a piece of card or maybe a maybe a piece of gold card would be really pretty and literally use a corner punch to give it a rounded edge and that's what I've done on this one here so you don't have to have these fancy punches to add a skirt at the bottom but I am going to take a couple of pieces that I've already created I've got them in these beautiful browns and greens and just add two to the bottom there so I think I'll start with this fluty edge one and just stick that on the back. So I've just done a bit of punching out here to save time. It doesn't take long, but I thought it would just help us today. And I like to go quite close to the skirt. I don't like to show much of this. Just get that on there. Trim off the excess. And then I'm going to add another one because I can, 
which should we have? Should we have the plain green or the spotty? Should we go for the spotty? Bit of contrast, I like that. So again, I'm going to just add a bit of glue on the back here. I think it's probably a glue stick today for this. And I think this really adds something and it's a chance to use those punches that I don't use very often. Get that on there. Again, maybe go quite close to the delicate edge and trim that off. And how quick was that? So that is our front focal element, just the base. So what we're going to do now is move on to the larger base at the back. To make the large tag base, like we have for each of these, we either need to take the sheet as we have here and back it onto a couple of book pages or a thin master board. And that's what I've been doing. I've just been making a few up, as you can see. So this is just masterboard with a couple of sheets of depth. I have them handy, ready to use. Or you could literally just glue a couple of book pages behind. If you want to write on these, maybe put paper that's capable of, of journaling on, maybe lined paper. I thought today what I would do I will show you all these finished tags, but I thought I would show you what I do with just scraps of card as well. So as you can see, I've got a bit of card, it's been scribbled on, that was a donation. And I've got a piece of coloured old book page. This is one that I dyed myself with my acrylic paints. If you're interested, I have a video on that. And this tag base, is about three inches by six inches, but it actually doesn't really matter. You don't need to be too prescriptive and exact about the size of this backing one. You obviously want it to be a bit bigger than the one at the front. And I tend to think of the smaller one being about two thirds of the size of the big one, but it really doesn't matter, which means that this is a great project for using up your scraps of cardstock. So I'm literally going to just back it on there trim off the excess. I think the easiest way that I find is to give it a fold to begin with and I will absolutely not be throwing away these pieces. These will get used in some form of collage, no doubt. Like that. And I'm going to cut off the corners. Let's use one that we've already done to make life easy. And what I like is about a two centimetre by two centimetre corner. So in and down two centimetres on either side. And I wanted to show you how to mix and match the kit with your own things. And to be honest, that's just the way I like to make these. It's just what happened when I was making up a, a collection. To give it a border, I'm going to go round this with a black pen. Sometimes I'll just do plain faux stitches and sometimes I'll do a dot and a dash or sometimes I'll do a wiggly line. It depends what the image is and what sort of style I'm creating. But I think for a larger tag, so the one at the back, rather than just a plain faux stitch, I'm doing a dot and a dash. But of course, if you have the patience and you feel like it, or maybe you're making a whole batch of these at once, you could get your sewing machine out again and go around it. And this will give us the back for us to add that front focal point tag. So it's time to decorate the small focal point. And of course, what we can do is choose from any of the three icons and also which of the sentiments you feel like using. So I've printed some and cut them out in advance. And I think all of these work really well. I think I'll go for the green Father Christmas. He's, he's so vintage, I really, really like him. And in terms of proportions, just to help you, what I like to do is have these little icons a little bit taller, a little bit sticking out above and beyond the height of my front focal point tag. So he is going to go there and I think he looks absolutely wonderful. 
and I'm going to add some extra details. And I decided I would use another of my punches. So this is, it's not a Christmas punch at all. I have used it a few times. Look, the picture's wearing off. I think it's woodware, yes it is. But the point here is, just reach into what you've got if you've got anything, have a play and adapt. because it doesn't really always need to be Christmassy. I've used a beautiful piece of paper. I thought this is just a gorgeous pattern and some beautiful colours to go with that vintage theme. So I'm going to, I think I'll just curl it a bit. Maybe just give it a little bit of an arc. This one actually has veins embossed into it when you punch through. So there's just a tiny bit of texture sometimes that you're able to see. So I'm going to put that on, give him a little bit of interest down there. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm also going to add the sentiment Merry and Bright. So using my glue stick, that can go on. And I'm shortcutting the process here, another little tip. I sometimes can't quite be bothered to mat my sentiments onto one or two little pieces of paper to make them pop, or I don't have the space on the image that I'm adding it to. So what I like to do is take my pencils, these are easily controlled because they're pencils, look for maybe a colour in the image, maybe brown will work well, and just go around it. I use this when I do pages in my glue book actually. It makes your image pop. So maybe have a bit of that one. And these are well used, well loved, space limited. Look, they're upright. Arteza watercolour pencils. I use them time and time again. Love them. So maybe give that a bit of a border, which means I just need a little bit of water to get that pigment to flow. I might even add another colour. And these are the kind of things I like to do, just to take a kit and make it a little bit more personal and make best use of my own supplies. I'm just going to add a bit of red because I feel like it. I think that will work well. goes with the red in his sack. Just let that come out. Fantastic. It's just a little bit different now. I feel good about it. And then I'm going to attach this to here with a bit of 3D foam. And I want it to be just on the right hand side, just sticking out to the right a little bit. So it looks intentionally, I suppose, not plumb centre, which means my piece of foam, this is just children's foam, 3D foam that you can buy in packs. It's a bit cheaper than buying those foam sticky things that you see a lot of the card makers using. I think they're quite expensive. So I want lots of glue on there and that will go on that side. There we go. Perfect. A bit more glue on there. I don't need foam over the whole thing. One piece like that should be enough. Plenty of glue. I do find I need plenty of glue to make this work. So just getting that to stick a little bit further on the right hand side. And I want my day on here. So I'm going to have that just behind here, just at the top there. And to finish it off, I'm just going to add five little black dots that have punched out of some glittery paper that I happen to have. I just used my crocodile to make the holes. You could use any hole punch. And these are going to be just extra little features to make your eye go to the corner of the images. So I'll do this with my fingers. It is going to be a little bit fiddly. One, two there. I've got a spare one. And just three up here. And then I just need to add a tag at the top of some form. And I've done that in a few different ways too on the examples I'll show in a second. So I've just added a piece of fabric as a tie, which means the finished tag looks like this. And I think it's really pretty. I absolutely 
love this kit. So the other ones I said I'd show you, this is the one with the original tag base used for both the focal point and the back. And I've added the sentiment to the back here and just matted that onto gold and red cardstock. He's got some splats of gold, point, gold paint as well and some of those punched out leaves. I've added some smaller punches as well. On this one I used plain green cardstock at the back just as contrast and the top here is a couple of circles that I've got some colour on and I've punched out and glued together. So that's also a very pretty one. I love the red spotty punched out leaves at the bottom there and he has a message on the left. I think those are also Trace's Christmas labels. On this one I'm back to the green Christmas tree. I've used a vintage style script paper behind and this is the offcut from some of those punched out skirts that I added. So I, I tend to keep the offcuts and just see if I can use them to add a bit of interest. I've used a punched out flower and some sequins there and you can see the gold skirt. And on this one we have a beautiful thick piece of wool at the top and I've got a very fine and dandy red spotty leaf down below which goes incredibly well with our red Santa Claus. Check out the other videos in this collaboration. A playlist and the kit are linked in the description box down below. And if you do like making ephemera, then check out my playlist here. And I hope to see you soon.